Welcome to Raid's AI. In this episode, we're going to be downloading and installing Python as well as creating our first neural network in it. Let's get started. So installing and downloading Python, it's really simple. You just go to their website. I'll leave a link in the description and you just download Python 3.5.2. It's not the most up-to-date, but uh, later in the series, we're going to be using a few libraries that require this version or lower. So yep, just download that and yep, it'll give you a download file, double click on it, just a fairly simple and normal uh, installation. Okay, so once you have that installed, it'll give you a program called idle. Um, in idle, you have a shell and a file you're working on. Uh, basically what happens is whenever you run the file, it gets executed in the shell, or you can type code directly into the shell. It's pretty much like a terminal or a command prompt, but um, it's executed by the code. So this code right here, um, you might have seen it before, it's a slightly modified version of the uh, website demonstration, a neural network in 11 lines of Python. Uh, I just modified it slightly for the sake of my tutorials, but I'll leave a link for that in the description if you want to have a read of it. At this point, you should already understand the programming language Python, but if you don't, I'll try to make it as simple as possible to understand. So as with other programming languages, we're just going to start off with some imports, or just one in this situation. Uh, NumPy is the um, number and mathematics uh, library of Python, and it's mainly used for more uh, advanced than just the built-in stuff, but not advanced in a technical sense. So import that, uh, it's used a few times. Um, the next thing we do is define our one function in this. Uh, it's the sigmoid function. So a sigmoid, I've showed it before, is this curve. Um, you can map it to any length, it can be into the negatives, it can be just positives. In this example, it goes from negative 8 to 8, it could go from negative 1 to 1. Generally, you try to keep it so that it's equal on either side. But yeah, uh, all it does is it maps along the x-axis uh, so that it's more definitive uh, in the inside, and the other ones, um, it starts to scale less and less. So you can see how it tries to get to the up or down sides rather than staying in the middle which is good for neural networks because it makes answers more definitive, uh, definitives and it also caps it so you can't go overboard which is also good so now that we have got that out of the way um, this is the code for doing that so the sigmoid function um, this is the uh, formula right here it's just uh, it just makes it so that if you give it somewhere between 1 and 0 it'll return it as that scaled value the other part of this is the derivative, so uh, all the derivative is, it's fairly simple, it's just um, calculus at any one point on a line, what's the slope or gradient at that point. Um, we mainly need this so that we can work out what direction we're going in and how fast we're moving in that direction. Okay, so now that we have that, uh, the next part is the input. So we just call x the input, and similar to the last few videos I've done, it has a few inputs, um, each is grouped into three. So 0, 0, and 1, 0, 1, and 1, 1, 0, and 1, and 1, 1, and 1. Um, similar to the examples I've been doing, it's always the first example of the first input that determines the output. So you can see 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. Okay. The next thing at this point you should know is the Y or the output. Uh, it's really just what you want the neural network to get. You could add more because this isn't all of these situations, but a lot of the time you aren't going to get all the situations, so we'll just leave it like that. The next variable is the weights. So we just call it weight zero because it is the first layer or the zeroth layer in coding. Uh, all it is is it's a bunch of random numbers between negative one and one or weights with mean zero next variable is the training rate. In this situation, 1 or higher actually works the best, but generally you'll try to keep this lower than 1. And the next variable is the epochs. Uh, I'll just turn that up a bit because generally you want to have quite a few epochs. What the epochs are is it's how many times you run through and practice the training. So in this situation, 10,000 is probably a bit overkill, but it'll make sure it gets done. Okay, so this next part is just looping through the amount of epochs, so it just repeats that amount of times. And this is actually really quick, it's almost instant, but this is where the actual neural network part happens. Okay, so the first part is forward propagation. 
we're setting the layer 0 to equal x. So that's just the zeroth layer or the first layer is equal to uh, x. It's simple as that. Uh, the next part is L1. That's the output because this is only a two layer neural network and there's no hidden layer. So L1 equals, well, first of all, you're just multiplying the input, which is L0, by the weights. And to multiply matrices, which is what these are, you just use dot. It's just um, a way to keep it in one line rather than doing a bunch of different loops. So if you just do that, it multiplies the inputs by the weights and then it'll keep that as an array so you'll have the next layer. Then all we do is we get the sigmoid of it so it gets mapped onto this curve. And what that does is again it'll just cap it at uh, 1 or 0 which is what we want because we don't want it to be going over those in this situation because the values are only between 0 and 1. Um, okay so the next part is the error evaluation similar to what I've been doing before, it's just the target value minus the actual value or what you got. So L1 error or the error for the layer 1 is equal to Y minus L1. So what we set up the top as we as the output and what we got as the output. The next part is the rest of the error evaluation. Uh, it's actually getting the delta rather than the error, which includes things like slope and direction and all that sort of stuff. So L1 delta equals L1 error, which is what we got just there, multiplied by the sigmoid of the output. Um, but this is the actual sigmoid derivative, as you can see, I've set true right here. And what that means is it's getting the slope rather than the actual value. So again, let's say um, we ended up getting like 4 as an output in this situation. Uh, you can see there's not going to be much slope because at this point right here along where I'm tracing my mouse you can see there's not much slope. Whereas if I was right here along the middle you can see how it's a pretty drastic slope which means you've got a lot of adjusting to do. Um, it just tries to keep it away from the middle. That's as I said earlier, is, that's the purpose of a sigmoid. So we've got that and then we also multiply that by the training rate. So you probably recognize this. This is the algorithm we were using before for evaluating um, all of the stuff we need. So remember, it was error multiplied by the input multiplied by the training rate added to the old weight. And you might be thinking, where is the weight? And that is on the next line. So weight zero plus equals, which for those who don't know, just equals weight zero equals weight zeros plus, whatever's after this line. I uh, numpy dot dot which is just the multiplication from earlier so you're multiplying the input by the delta so this finishes that whole uh, weight equals weight plus error times uh, training rate times input so that just finishes that off then we've added that to the weight and it's gradually adjusted it uh, obviously the training rate will affect that and okay so that's actually all of the code at the end you're just saying uh, print out the output. Uh, you could make it so that it also says uh, print L1 error, for example, so that you also know the error. Um, okay, so now that we have all of the code done, we can actually test it. You might have already seen the results up here, but if we just press F5, which is the run uh, button, uh, you can just press that, and this is the output. So. Uh, you can see for the inputs, which are 0, 0, 1, and 1, it ended up getting 0 0.009, which is extremely close to 0, uh, and then also 0 0.07, and the same on the other side, uh, so 0 0.99, 0 0.99. Generally, this is just like the sort of stuff that will happen. It'll never get perfect unless you let it run forever, but generally it won't land on an integer just because um, it's just the way the algorithm works. Uh, again, by chance you might, but you can never be certain. Um, and then here's the error. So it went slightly over the top, so it's got a negative error. And on here it's gone a bit under, so it's got a positive error. So you can see how small these numbers are. It's really just saying there wasn't much of an error, but there was slightly some. So if we were to keep it running, it could still adjust it. So yeah, that's everything. Uh, Another part of neural networks is that there's always a bit of like uh, just playing with the variables a bit. So in this situation, the shape of the network is three inputs and one output. So 
there's no hidden layer or anything. You could make it so that there was a hidden layer, which is not really that useful in this situation, for example. But another thing you could do is play with the training rate. Um, what I'm going to do first is lower the epochs just to see if that changes anything. So let's just say I change that down to 100. Let's give that a go. Um, you can see how the error is bigger because it didn't have enough time to adjust totally. So uh, it's getting sort of right, but it's about 0.1 off rather than 0 0.001 now. Which makes sense because it's 0 0.01 times 10,000. So the other thing you can change is the training rate. Um, in this situation, which is just dealing with numbers between 1 and 0, uh, you should be alright making this higher than 1 actually. So if I just press F5 again, uh, yep, it actually got it closer than it did before because in this situation it's between 1 and 0, which means the training rate can be a bit higher than 1 and not have any problems. However, if I change this down to like 0 0.1, which is a common uh, learning rate for other things, uh, with more complicated and you don't want it to over adjust or overfit is what they call it. Um, in this situation that doesn't work out too well. You can see how it's always like under or over 0 0.5 which is correct but it's not too correct. Okay so yeah generally you'll just try to keep this about 0 0.9 that's also a pretty common one or 0 0.75 it really just depends on what you're doing you experiment with it see what works best and yeah because you want you don't want to use many epochs you want to keep that as small as possible so with this I think it was 5 and 100 um, that works surprisingly well so we'll just leave it with that because that doesn't take too long and all the other ones are instant anyway but this takes even less time and works almost as well again you could turn that up a bit but if I say turn that up to like 1000 uh, you'll notice how it ends up uh, sort of overfitting it for example in this one um, instead of having zero for the first two it got one in both of them which means it went way over the top so you don't want that, you want to keep it sort of low but not too low. Or too high. Okay, so that's everything. Um, I'll see you in the next video, I guess. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and check out some of my other videos. If you haven't already, subscribe and enable notifications so you can know whenever I upload. See you in the next video.